country. Yeah. Let's go to Tanzania. When Jakaya Kikwete was the president of Tanzania, people accused him of a lot of international trips. Uh, president Ruto is doing almost what Jakaya Kikwete used to do. As you have this conversation, uh, Tanzania is getting very impressive FDI numbers. Because Kikwete decided to go to the global level and position Tanzania. He even lobbied for so many Tanzanians to get international assignments, international jobs. That is number one. Number two, if you've got surplus nurses, would you rather the surplus nurse, assume my name is Nimora from Osocho, go to a market called Inyakoe and sell vegetables, or take her skills to New Zealand or Italy? You've spent a fortune training as a nurse in Kenya, and uh, there's surplus. Mm -hmm. Talk about our teachers. If you've got surplus teachers, would you rather they drink changa the entire day or they go to Angola or another country to go and teach? So whatever Owila is indicating here is uh, he wants to frustrate uh, people's capacity to take advantage of globalization of markets and production. Now we're even talking about a visa-free Africa <laughs> that the only thing you need to do is to have your Kenyan passports. Okay. If there's you an know, opportunity, yes. if there's an opportunity in Ghana for a Kenyan, please go. Yeah. And for me, I'd like us to come with a deliberate policy mm. of creating massive opportunities for Kenyans worldwide. Let's use, you know, we keep on using these examples. Use India as an example. The Prime Minister in the UK is of Indian origin. The World Bank President, Indian origin. If you go to the US, the tech industry is run by Indians. Why can't we do the same? Let's get Kenyans who want to take advantage of the world, go all over, so that at some stage, Indian has got a, now an African, a Kenyan prime minister, US has got a, a Kenyan president, like Obama, we have so many. Mm -hmm. So next time we have a G7, okay. the common denominator is Kenya. For instance, <laughs> Owila here, yeah. if Owila, Owila is a teacher at a university in Kenya, is he suggesting that uh, if he gets an offer from Harvard or Oxford, he will decline and he'll say, no, I want, to, I want to work next to my village. Go all over the world and conquer it and bring us the dollar. But the, bring issue, us the, the issue of world oh, oh, apologies, oh, yes. oh, Willa is raising. <laughs> he may soon be in the cabinet. <laughs> Who knows? The issue yeah. Willa is raising is about the work environment in the country perhaps being unattainable that we are forcing this young minds, this job seekers to seek opportunities abroad since there's no opportunity. Not that there's a surplus, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that there are few opportunities here. And it's the work of the government to create opportunities locally as well as regionally or internationally. Are we doing the necessary steps locally? Now, President, uh, the late President Moi opened up the education space in Kenya. And when Kibaki came, he buttressed it. We've got about, I think, the last count, about 70 universities in Kenya, okay. producing top talent. Okay. The responsibility of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration is to create opportunities for Kenya locally and internationally. So if they've created opportunities at an international level, I don't see why Willa wants to box someone. So you've been given the <laughs> option. You can either work in Kenya. If there is no opportunity in Kenya, mm. make your way to the international market. Actually, yeah, in my yeah, view, yes, another thing yes, that we need to do... No, the no, first thing I say... Let, 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 let me address the point. Okay. In fact, another thing that we now need to do, yeah. in my view, it's a policy which is very urgent. Compel Kenyans to learn another language outside English to do French, Arabic, Portuguese, so that when they complete high school right. or the university, okay. they're ready for the global market. You know,